Oh man, the UPS batteries are dead again. Time to get out the hammer. Hello, today I'm covering uninterruptible power supplies, or UPSs. These devices have one primary function. Keep the power on for a short period of time when the main power goes out. The UPS is essentially two power supplies. One takes over seamlessly for the other one if one fails to deliver power, keeping the power flow to the device uninterrupted. Hey, that's in the name. That's it. How do you accomplish this though, and what technologies are available for this, and are there any efficiency concerns? There will be lots of technical concepts, but I'm going to try and keep the advanced topics out of the video. For the most part, this is going to be a simplified and a very basic overview of the topic, but covering a little nuance and issues people generally have with these. Thanks to my patrons and channel supporters for suggesting this video. This was like two years ago, still timely as ever. This isn't a review, but more of an overview of the technology behind these UPS devices. Sometimes you want to keep the power on, so it's kind of automatic if you use a laptop, tablet, or phone. If it's plugged in and the power goes out, the laptop stays on. And you can save your work and close things down if you happen to be on the low end of the battery spectrum. But what if your files are on a network and the router went down with it? Well, that's where UPS comes in. These can keep the AC power running for a reasonable period of time while you get things safely shut down. That's the primary concept. Prevent data loss. Prevent lost time from restarting computer systems. And prevent failures in hospitals, which keep, you know, life-saving equipment, well, life-saving. So first of all, what is a UPS and why do you need them? What can Brown do for you? Oh, no, wrong UPS. A UPS is essentially two power supplies. One takes over for the other if one fails to deliver power. That's it. There are many ways of accomplishing this change in power delivery to your device. So why do you need an uninterruptible power supply? I'm going to stick to UPS from now on. As mentioned in the intro, you want to keep the power on. This has implications in lots of equipment in and around buildings and infrastructure to keep your life moving if the power dips for a short period of time. Hospitals, emergency lighting, cell phone towers, fire alarm systems, the reach is huge. And essentially all of these systems have a battery backup so a short term dip in the power doesn't cause the whole system to go down. Let's analyze some options. If you abruptly turn off computer systems during critical tasks, you lose data. If a network switch was doing any critical network switching, you lose that task. If you have any security systems, cameras or fire alarm systems, you lose those systems. Cell towers go down. In hospitals, a ventilator may fail. I don't think I need to say why you don't want these to fail and you want them on at all costs. These things take a long time to come back online. So even a brownout is enough to trigger a power outage at your device. And this is why the UPS is here and here to stay. It seems like a lot of industrial uses, and it is. But for the general home user, these can help electronics as well. You'd have to keep your backup generator on all the time if you wanted a generator swap. So short-term batteries allow you to more slowly switch the power over while never interrupting operations. UPS technology has changed a little over time, but basically the core concept is the same. A device that can switch the power between a battery source and a main source. The main thing that has changed is now lithium ion batteries are in some systems, likely lithium iron phosphate, and they've gotten a whole lot bigger for data center applications. But I'm not going to focus on data center sized things. That's a whole other animal. The essential home UPS can do a sine wave output. Switch very quickly. A relay is okay as long as your devices have enough holdup time, which generally they should be designed to tolerate a few milliseconds it takes to switch a physical relay. Holdup time is the amount of time a power supply can keep delivering power when the input goes dark. These are often designed for two cycles or so of the mains waveform, so 40 milliseconds at full load. More is better, but there is a cost and size constraint. Some older UPSs would use a square wave output or a modified sine wave output, and these were sometimes more or less tolerant of devices connected to a UPS. Home UPSs are good to keep your internet up during short term outages and keep any desktop computers, TVs, or small electronics operating. If it's a long outage, then you'd need to switch over to a generator or other power source. This switch is something large data centers and hospitals do. Power goes out, UPS runs while the generator starts up, then the generator takes over. Do you really need one? Maybe. It depends on what you are doing. Today, there are battery wall systems that can do this for your whole house, but they're fairly uncommon still. One thing you will note on actual UPS units is the rating will often be in VA. This is volts times amps. 
and this is done for a reason. Your devices probably don't have Unity Power Factor, and therefore it takes extra current to power these devices. A UPS has to be able to supply the apparent power to keep these devices operating. The real power will equal the apparent power when the power factor equals 1. So your UPS is rated 500 VA, then it should be able to do 500 watts, right? But it can't. The real power consumed is the battery plus efficiency losses, and this is the rating of the device. With a mixed set of devices, say 0.7 power factor, they uprate the volt amp by the power factor. So a 350 watt continuous device becomes 500 VA, and you know, bigger number. In either case, this would be plenty for most people's home router or small computer setups. No, UPSs are not designed for continuous output operation. They often don't have the cooling or efficiency. They're designed to turn on fast, keep things running for just long enough, then recharge. Small power supplies often have power factors of 0.4 or 0.5, so the VA rating of the UPS would be achieved much faster and therefore it would handle even less real power. You can see the various manufacturers downrating of wattage or uprating of the VA by different amounts. Make sure you pay attention to this because they may be overrating to get an edge in marketing. There are several types of UPSs. The cheapest and most common are the offline type of UPSs. These have a relay that physically switches between the inverter and the mains when the mains disappears. Many of these are still lead acid battery based, but the biggest issues with these is the batteries last about three or four years typically. My main UPS is a 1000 VA unit and it finishes its tour with a battery every three years. The cells are genuinely cooked too. It tests itself every day, so it does charge and discharge at least a little every day. My devices have enough holdup time that the UPS's switching time doesn't cause an issue for me, but under a very heavy load, a computer may not be able to tolerate that switch time. So the next type of UPS, which is a better device if reliability is the main concern or you don't mind spending a lot more money, the device keeps the power flowing through an AC to DC to AC path at all times. This way, the battery is always ready to immediately take over the load, no switching time. This is called an online UPS. These are common in data centers and more mission critical applications. Think hospitals, which also make use of generators. A lot of equipment has internal batteries now, so those can kind of be thought of as an online UPS. If efficiency is important, then an online DC to DC UPS can be employed. This is something that has a DC input and keeps the output steady if the main input disappears. This is, at its core, more basic than an extra AC to DC to AC conversion process, so it can be a lot more efficient as it has less steps. It's important to consider how the voltage conversion is done, though. I set up a basic example to demonstrate a DC to DC UPS. This very basic circuit does diode steering to keep the power at the output on. Many of the really cheap DC to DC module UPSs you get do this. It's not great for efficiency, but it is reliable and really simple, especially if you only need low power. So if I turn the power off, this output module will stay on. The voltage stability isn't great. That's mostly a loss of the non-ideal diodes doing the switching, but the power is still being supplied. If you swap over to this non-UPS version and the power goes out, well, no surprise, the power goes out. So tying this into the channel's general content, this anchor caused a lot of confusion on the fact that it isn't an online UPS. The device specifically behaves in a way that doesn't allow power to pass through the device in an active state. It will charge and it will discharge, but once the battery is charged, it no longer uses power from the mains power source. It will pull all of the energy from the battery and stop consuming power from the wall. The power will stay on if the charging port is removed. But the issue is it's continuously charging and discharging the battery rather than doing a key feature of an uninterruptible power supply. This key feature is pass-through, and this doesn't do that. So it will drain the battery right to zero, then when the power goes out, there won't be any energy left to keep the device on, but then it'll start charging again when the power comes back on. This device technically could be a UPS with a software change, and it has the appropriate converters and pieces in place to be able to pass power through the already existing DC bus, but this isn't the intent of this device, so it's okay that it doesn't do it. It isn't expected to do this, and I'm just using it as an example here. The opposite of that is this EcoFlow device, which does keep the power on, whether inverter or DC port. If you pull the mains power out 
the output stays on. This would fall in the offline category for the AC output because it does do relay switching, but in the case of the USB output, it would be an online UPS. Again, just an example. Another thing UPSs can do is let your server or other device know that the power is out. This allows the server to see the remaining battery and shut the system down if things become critical. This is a pretty advanced feature and there are lots of tutorials out there for taking advantage of this functionality. Okay, so finally, advantages and disadvantages of each type of UPS and why you may pick one over the other. First, I'm going to talk about idle power usage. In general, the offline UPS is going to be better here, once the battery is charged, of course, because it doesn't use any energy when the grid is just passing through the device. There is still a small power consumption to keep the circuits active inside, and some VA consumption for all the filtering components, which is also often associated with UPSs. The online UPS has active power stages at all times, so in general, these devices are going to be more power hungry, even if they aren't doing anything. This will also track for the general efficiency of the devices. The online UPS uses more energy, therefore it will be a little less efficient. During power delivery, the efficiency isn't really considered as this is a short-term event, and that hopefully doesn't happen too often. A DC to DC online UPS could be more efficient if the design is thoughtful. The main advantage of an online UPS over the offline is the switching time. The online UPS switches instantly, so those circuits are always passing power through the circuit. The offline UPS has to switch a physical relay and start the inverter, and this takes time. For the most part, the other items on UPSs are kind of shared between the different types. Power ratings are often in VA. This online type does often have a pure sign output, and all of them can use various battery technologies. For the cheaper UPSs, lead acid is still very common. There is a lot of design and care that goes into these products. Unfortunately, my UPS here is broken. I have others that work just fine, but the broken one was available for a video. It just makes a sizzling noise now. One thing that this UPS did do was detect that something was wrong and turn off and report an error code. So another crucial factor for UPSs is safety. There are many non-safety rated products on the market and they have been known to cause serious fires or damage. There are UPS units that have adhesive that over time went conductive and destroyed the units. There's also battery swelling issues, and I personally know one building that burned down because of a UPS. So make sure your UPS has appropriate safety markings and listings for your local area. Okay, so basically it comes down to managing energy and control software of the various sources and sinks. If you can't manage them in specific ways, you risk causing an overcharge of the battery or you risk damaging some other part of the circuitry. Of course, there have to be multiple layers of protection, fusing, circuit disconnections, polarity protection, overvoltage, undervoltage, transient protection, EMI, and RF control considerations. And the list goes on and on. So the idea that these generally have to be safety listed and it takes a very long time and a lot of engineering hours to make stuff like this is important to consider when looking at price. So it is time to look at some UPSs in the future and see how they do. I'm going to start with some that are kind of just power banks, the cheap DC to DC variety. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Goodbye.